Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So this is a continuation video on my rear cargo slash sleeper platform. And what I want to do today is actually install a window switch for the rear window uh, inside of the um, you know back cargo area so that way if I'm sleeping in there I can you know roll the window up and down uh, this makes it more convenient because you know if I didn't have a switch you actually have to climb to the front put the key in the ignition roll it up or yeah roll it up um, you know if you're in the back and you have the key you actually can rear uh, you know roll it down with the key but you have no way of rolling it back up so this will make it much more convenient so that I can control the windows up and down at any given point um, while I'm in the back and really all you're gonna need for this job is a second gen 4Runner uh, switch um, they actually have a rear window as well and you actually can use any switch but this switch is the most convenient because it actually has the arrows um, up and down in the right direction if you actually get a third gen um, it's actually upside down um, the 96 through 98s, they're actually upside down. If you go with the 1990 through 95, you actually will get this switch, which actually also comes with a, a harness plug, which makes it super easy to install and much cleaner. So you can disconnect it if you actually have to take off a panel or something. Um, so the switch cost me, let's see, about $10 at my local pick and pull here. Um, so like I mentioned, you want to find a 1990 through 95 and um, usually it's in the center console um, where the where the uh, shifter is that's kind of where the switch is and you want to make sure that you take the entire harness and just cut it somewhere over here so here's our third gen switch from a 96 through 98 toyota 4 runner and you can kind of see you know the down and the up it's kind of backwards see the bottom one is up and the top one is down which is not ideal. I mean, this works on the Forerunner in the front, but not in the back. It'd just be confusing. It'd be upside down, and then if you try to flip it, all the words would be upside down, and the word back window would be upside down as well. And you notice here, there's no harness. It's just a plug. I mean, I guess this would work in my situation because you would just pull up, wire these, you know, three of these wires up the same way, and then plug it in. Um, but the other one you know has a nice harness right here for you so either one will work if you just prefer the cleaner you know this obviously goes up then go with the second gen if you don't care find a third gen I actually got this first because I couldn't find a second gen but when this one appeared I didn't start this project yet so I actually have two switches so all right guys so what we need to first do is determine which wires we need to use. Um, there's five wires on here. Uh, three of them are going to be the ones of interest. There's two more extra ones that are probably the ground and the illumination. This thing probably lights up. There's a bulb in here. And actually this actually tells me that this wire here on top is the bulb. Um, so that one is probably the one we don't need. And then this one down here actually looks like it's already um, probably the ground. So these these two are probably not needed, but we'll go ahead and test it anyways. So what you want to do is grab yourself a multimeter because you're going to need it, and you're going to need to set it to um, you're going to need to set it to continuity. And what it does is when these two probes are connected together, it basically says that they're continuous, right? So on a switch, all this, all the switch is doing is it's connecting two wires together when the switch is pressed. So we're going to put these two on, you know, random two wires, and then when we press it, if it's continuous or if it beeps, that means that those two wires get connected. And one of the wires is going to be shared between the up and down, all right? And that wire is actually the one that's going to provide the computer um, on the rear window uh, to tell it to, you know, either roll the window up or down. And depending on the switch, it's going to, you know, pick the appropriate wire to use. So let's go ahead and... Uh, connect these wires up. So I'm going to use alligator clips to make it a little bit easier. And let's see, we determined some of these wires aren't used, but I'm not even going to bother figuring out which one's which. I'm just going to connect them and that'll be the easiest way. So let's see, black probe, 
All right, so what I'm going to do is first test that these alligator clips are working, which they should be. And the easiest way to do that is just to tap this. And if it beeps, then it's working. And then I'm going to connect to this guy here. And I'm going to press up and down. And it didn't click, so that's those two aren't the right ones. Um, if I connect up and down, those aren't the right ones either. Maybe this green one. Am I really that unlucky? Yep. And then this one's got to be it. Okay, so these two wires here control the up. So when I press up, they're connected together. And that's what the beep's telling me. When I press down, nothing. Okay, so that, and earlier I pressed down on all of these. So, it's, so this one is probably the one that is feeding the two wires. So I'm not gonna use this one again. So I'm gonna plug it into this one again, and then I'm gonna find which one is down. So we already know up's not gonna work because we know it's this one already. So I'll put it to the side. So down doesn't work. Let's see. Nope. So those two don't work. How about this one? Okay. So you can see there, it works with down. So that we know that this wire is the shared wire between these two. And depending on if you press up, then these two wires get connected. If you press down, these two wires get connected. And that's basically how a switch works. And these two wires here are, like I said, it's probably for the, the light and the bulb and the ground, which, let's see, this green wire goes to this red one, this one goes to this red one, and the two red ones are the ones we found earlier. And you can see the pins. And you actually can probe these wires here as well if you really wanted to, um, you know, if you didn't want to use the wires. The wires just make it easier. You can just touch these, and it's the same thing as using the wires. So now that we found uh, which wires are which, it's not this one, um, I'm going to label them so I know, I don't remember which one is which anymore, but I think this one was up, well, I'll verify it again, and then this one was down. So I'll just label them, actually let me just check it really quick before I start writing stuff. Since I know that these work already, I'm just going to touch it with this thing. Okay, so that's up. This one shouldn't work. That's good. And then these two should be down. All right. So this is going to be important because we need these two wires here to control the rear window. Okay. And then these two wires I'm not going to use, so what you can you know, do also is just take the pins out. And you can do that pretty easily by just taking the plug off. And then in here there's a little pin. You need something really thin like a pick. And you just touch it or poke it and pull it all out. And then we just got these three to deal with. And then this can be installed wherever you want. And then these. Um, so, the way, um, so the way the window works is... Uh, let me actually cut these off so that I don't get confused. So the way the window, the rear window works is it's already a completed circuit and all you need to do is provide a ground to it for it to go up or down. And the way the stock OEM remote works is when you hold down the rear window button, it just sends a ground to the, the down wire. Um, so we need to find the down and the up wire. And then what we need to do is um, we tap these two wires into those existing wires that are there in the system now and then what we do is um, we supply this wire and ground this wire so that it's always grounded and then when we press the up button this one it will it will turn this wire into a ground and what that will do is that will ground the rear window and then it will go up and then if we press down then these two wires get connected and remember this 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 third wire is the ground here and it will simulate basically a down, um, um, a down action. And then that will give us the up down with this switch wherever we want to. So if you guys don't have a multimeter and you guys are using the same switch that I am from a second gen 4Runner, um, if you look at the connector, this is where the tab is to take the connector out. It's you know, pin number, I guess the top left pin is the ground, the common ground that I mentioned earlier. The top right pin is the down, and the bottom left pin is the up. Okay, so this red one is up, 
this white and red is the ground that I'm going to ground permanently. And then um, both of these wires are actually the same here. It's white, white with a green stripe and some you know silver dots. They're both the same, but you'll want the one that's on the top right if you look at the connector. So this connector is right here, it's this wire here, and that's the down. So if you don't have a multimeter, then you can just use the same wires that I used and you should be good. And this wire also on the other side is actually blue. So if you want to use that as a reference as well, you can do that as well. Um, basically you want to use all the wires that are not red back here, the one, these red ones, because those aren't needed. Um, if you do want to wire it so it lights up to like, let's say when you turn on the ignition, then yeah, you'll probably want to use these two wires and you'll want to ground um, the, let's see, you want to ground this white, this white with green, and then this one will be a 12 volt source. So, you know, hook it up to an ignition or a fuse, you know, a tap a fuse, or sorry, add a fuse, and you can make it light up as well if you really want to, but I'm not gonna do that. All right, so you're gonna wanna take this panel off because the motor is right under here. And to do that, you just gotta take off this guy first. Just get a flathead in there. Looks like a 10 millimeter. Let's see. 10 millimeter. And then all you need to do is just start pulling down, and there's just plastic clips holding it in. Let me actually get a tool so I don't destroy all of them. Alright, so I got one of these little guys. Surprise through here. Alright, all right, once you get it all off, you gotta actually push this way. You know, it's a get get tell it was down, you know, upward. And then it should come right out. that guy out of the way. These are the wires we're after right here in this harness. Let me get you closer. A little bit of research on T4R.org and a couple other sites and I found that this harness right here is the one that holds the two signals or the two the two wires that need to be grounded for the motor to go up and down with this relay with this relay. So this um, green with red is supposed to be I believe up and then the other wire um, green with let's see green with red is up and then the other wire green with yellow this guy here uh, green with yellow stripe is supposed to be down so green with red stripe is up green with yellow stripe is down and we're going to test that by using our switch and we're going to ground it and once we send ground to this wire or this wire it's going to make the the window here go up or down so we're looking at it from the bottom with the tailgate up and we're on the we're on the driver's side right now this is where my uh, relay harness is so we're going to go ahead and test it out and see what happens just starting to contemplate if i should just drill a hole through this piece of metal here because I think it's hollow back there that way the switch will fit and actually just run the switch you know somewhere right here you know against the back that will save a lot of headache because fishing a wire through here is such a nightmare and believe me I've done it before I actually fished the rear camera that I have on my tailgate and it was a nightmare I actually ended up ripping the third brake light and then I had to repair it um, so yeah I think I'm gonna do that actually and I think I will tap into this ground nope not that one this guy back here it looks like it's a thicker wire as well so I'm gonna use a thicker uh, t-tap this yellow one's actually for thicker wires like 14 gauge so 
Let me see how that goes. And I'm gonna start cutting it out to fit this guy. And see how I'm gonna run all the wires. All right, so I am gonna go with that idea because actually it's gonna make running wires a lot easier. And I don't have to use all my wire. I mean, look at this rat's nest here. Just need to use this with this connector and it'll connect right here. And then when the switch goes in, it just plugs in. Should be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these males on there and just connect it up to the right wire. So I've already labeled it. This one's ground, this one's down, and this one's up. You can watch an earlier part of the video to determine what's what. And then once it's plugged in, it should work. Well, we're gonna be able to test it right here in a little in a couple minutes here. So let's go ahead and just wire these guys up. So, let me get the heat gun and uh, heat this up and... Alright, all the wires are hooked up. The ground. The... Let's see, this one was the down wire. This green with yellow. And the green with the red was up. And so you can see here, I just plugged in the switch. So this can actually be removable now, which is why I mentioned earlier you should take this with you when you buy the switch. And that way you can remove it if you ever need to remove the panel off. Um, and you know, do any repairs or anything like that here. So let's go ahead and test it out. So you can't just press it like this. You actually have to pause and hold it. Uh, it's actually a, uh, it's probably designed for the remote in case somebody accidentally press down, uh, press a you know window to go down and it, and um, you know they don't want somebody to just take all their stuff. So you actually have to hold it for like one two seconds. Oh, it's already all the way down. So that's quite nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed on the back hatch and you know, I'll show you what the finished product looks like. All right guys, so I've gone ahead and measured the switch opening here. It's 19 millimeters by 37 millimeters. And I've kind of mocked it up uh, where I kind of want it. And what I'm gonna do is start with a drill bit to make a hole. And then I'm gonna switch over to the Dremel and then kind of just grind it out until this guy fits in there really snug so it doesn't move. There's little clips here that will hold it in, but I'm going to make it really snug so it doesn't go anywhere. All right, let's get started. Mm, this is too big. Let's go to a smaller bit first. I'll set you guys on this side. One thing to note is there is a, whoops, ripped that guy all the way to shreds. This guy was back there and I just twisted the hell out of it. Oops. switch to the Dremel now. Alright, so I made a few cuts with this cutting disc. You gotta be careful because you don't want to cut too much. So I just wanted to start with this. Now I'm going to switch over to this guy and finish it off.
Yeah. Alright guys, I got her all cleaned up. This is how she looks. It's pretty snug in there. Works nicely, will not come out. Alright, so we're gonna reassemble the rear cover and the angle's probably gonna be pretty bad for you guys, but if you guys took it off, you should be able to put it back on. glass actually rests on this metal piece when it's up like this so you gotta actually have it all the way down to make it a little bit easier. So let me show you how I do it. Take this strap and I hold the hatch kind of halfway. Like right there. Yeah, maybe a little bit more than that. There. So that way I can push this window back. Otherwise, there's not going to be enough room. And we also got to connect the connector as well. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that first. And you can't see this, but remember that connector that we installed? Okay. So that's in. Now we're going to put this back in. One side's in, uh, the other side's in, and looks like we don't have enough clearance for our switch, which is a bummer. We'll check out why. All right, guys. So here's what I did. So I took a measurement with this side here, with the panel still on, and this is the maximum depth I have. It's 29 millimeters. And it ranges from 29 to 33, depending on where you're at. And when I look at the switch, you'll see here it's perfect. Right? I mean, it's a hair, which should be okay. But the wires are poking up too much. So what I did was I bent all the wires down. I trimmed the switch flat as much as I can without damaging it. And I ho I'm hoping that this is going to give me the clearance I need. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it back in now and see what happens. So I'm going to try to push all the wires to that side since when the switch is in, these wires are angled that way. And I have to pop this guy open a little bit. Alright. So let's see. Our fingers. Oh, it's pretty close, but I think I think it's good enough. We've got a really tiny gap. Let me show you guys. Well, it's a pretty big gap. Let me see if I can fix that. All right, guys. Here's the final product. Uh, it's pretty good. I mean, you can't really tell unless you really go up in there and look, but it's got like a hair off. And what I did was I got rid of the insulation that was back here. It was kind of hanging it up. And then I got rid of the, um, there was a twist in the harness. So I just made it all flat and you see, it actually goes in all the way, but it gets pushed out because you know, it's really on there. But you can see it works up and down. All right, guys, just to wrap up the video, this is the final look at the uh, installation of the switch in the back. You can see it's uh, nice and OEM looking. And you can see it goes up just fine. All the way up. it um, one thing I wanted to mention also is uh, when you guys are doing this you know don't do too many tests with this rear cover off because you might end up scratching your rear, rear window 
Um, I actually scratched some of the tint off on the on the passenger side on, over here, and you can see actually it got scratched right here a little bit, which which isn't the end of the world. This car is a third, you know, this car is a third car for me, so I don't really mind. But just something to note in case uh, you were doing this and you know something happened. So make sure this thing is back on before you test it and if, to be honest for the most part you shouldn't have to test it very much all the wires and the colors i gave it to you already you know you can do a quick little test really quickly if you're really paranoid just make sure this window is pushed backwards you know away from the car because it tends to lean towards the front of the car and that's what makes it scratch this this rear window actually has this piece here that it actually rides on so um just keep that in mind and you know i don't want to have you know, people yelling at me for their damaged windows for testing, but you know, pretty much all the uh, stuff that I mentioned earlier, like the wiring and testing the switch, you don't really need to do a lot of that. Um, you can just use the same wire colors as mine and kind of just skip the multimeter, uh, tap into the same three wires that I tapped into, the ground, the um, blue with red, and the blue with yellow, and then just wire it to the right one, and then you know, you should be able to just put it in. You don't have to put your switch here. If you put your switch, you know, say over here or up here or wherever, just know that there's gonna be some clearance issues, you know, pretty much everywhere. Um, you'll have to, you know, clearance it out. Um, this one I ended up, you know, bending the wires, you know, dremeling off a piece of the plastic and it actually fits flush now, now that it's back in the car. So if you like the video, please like and subscribe and consider sharing and uh, just, you know, let me know if you guys have any questions and, um, you know, check out my channel for more videos and uh, see you in the next one.